All right, what's going on, Fiat Nation? I'm your host, G, and welcome back to our vinyl hands-on session in part two of our Celeste vinyl coverage. Last we left off, we took a look at the main game soundtrack composed by Lena Rain and everything it had to offer when playing through the game's campaign. Though that's only the first half of what made Celeste unique, because hidden behind the rest of the game was another soundtrack entirely, something that actually is very distinctly different from what the main game had to offer. So in part two, we're gonna continue our coverage with Celeste B-Sides. The Celeste B-Sides single LP, originally pressed in 2019 by Ship to Shore Phone Co., numbered as their 39th official release in their catalog. Hidden in the main game's levels are sections where the player can collect cassette tapes that unlock alternate versions of the game's main levels, referred to as the B-Sides. Every level in the game has a B-side, which includes greater challenge and has a greater emphasis on the level gimmicks being used. Some levels even make use of advanced techniques not taught in the main game, such as the wall dash, which gives Madeline upward momentum that's faster than her standard dash. These levels are not for the faint of heart, and the further into them you get, the greater the obstacle becomes, and by extension, the death count. The best part of the B-Sides is that every track from the main game has been remixed. But rather than Lena Rain, she invited a guest composer for each individual track. Said artists are displayed here, as I'll probably forget them in the next unscripted transition. Each guest artist comes from a different background, which means no track is going to sound the same. This creates a far greater diversity of genres featured in the soundtrack, which includes pop, jazz, hip hop, and of course, Electronic. This release includes 10 tracks in total, two of which are bonus tracks by Lana Rain released as part of Madeline's Grab Bag, but are never actually used in the game. To an extent anyways. Back in part one, when we discussed the main soundtrack, the one gripe I had with it was that you really can't listen to all the tracks individually, that there will always be some tracks that just sound off that unless you listen to the whole thing sequentially. With the B-Sides, I find that it's actually quite the opposite, where sometimes it's actually better when you jump track the track, which is in some ways very similar to the experience of the B-Sides. Some players may not stick to a certain stage long enough, or they might give up and go to the next one. The best part of the B-Sides is that you don't have to play the game sequentially like the main game. You really could jump around as you see fit. And because each track is unique and distinct, you could jump around with the soundtrack and play your favorites, and it will always sound great. It's not to undermine anything from the main game soundtrack, because Lana Rain still did an incredible job, but when you take what was incorporated into the B-side and all these remixes, and especially because of the guest artist and how every track is distinctly unique, that even though you may find some of the same instrumentals, overall, you really can't say that one sounds exactly the same as the other. And that's important for a part of the game where you're going to be spending a lot of time either struggling or trying to get past certain obstacles. That's what I think of the soundtrack, but how about the vinyl? Well, let's take a look at its presentation. The first thing you'll see with the front cover of its outer sleeve is that the artwork here is actually pretty basic, all things considered. It's simply just Celeste Mountain with streaks of blue and purple, accenting to Madeline and Battleline, respectively. I think what really adds to this one, though, is that it's actually more of a foil, which means it's very reflective. It catches the lights, it catches the reflection, and I think that helps it stand out a lot more in comparison to the main game soundtrack. Similarly, the next one we'll be looking at in the next part does something similar to a lesser extent. It's not as shiny. In some ways, it actually does work a little better because the one gripe I have with the artwork here, rather their approach to it, is that it's very suspect, uh, sus I, I can't say, susceptible to fingerprints. Meaning that if you're someone that really handles their music, you're gonna see it. And if you're a neat freak, I know I am, it will upset you. So be sure to look out for that. Alternatively, on the back side, it's actually a little more basic. It's just a track listing. I will say I do like the touch of having the cassette tape, which is the catalyst to entering each of the stages. I feel like you need to have that if you even want to talk about the B-sides in the first place. Apart than that, it gets the job done, but it's just a little too basic to my liking. So presentation-wise, 
let's call it a mixed bag. Does that mean it's bad by any means? No. No, I still think it's great. I feel like I can at least present this one, whereas the basic one still seems a little ominous when you compare it with the rest. I'm just saying. But now let's talk about the vinyl. So a little bit of a story with this one. I actually got this and the one we'll be looking at next as part of a Black Friday sale a couple of years back. Part of that was that both of them are the same. These are crystal clear, meaning that they're just basic vinyls they could see through. Nothing new to my collection, as a couple of mine actually do have this. And some people actually do like crystal clear vinyls, because unlike a black vinyl, you can actually see through it. So if you have certain slip mats, which I don't at this time, you can't actually have unique designs, which is pretty cool. But not all are made equal, and we'll probably see what that's like in just a little bit here. But just be sure to watch out for that. In my case though, haven't gotten these on sale, there's actually a scratch on one of the tracks that can't be fixed, it's too deeply rooted. Which one's that? Why, the very first track, Forsaken Cities Remix. Often I feel like that's a red flag that the very first track that you have in a record that has a gaping dash, uh, just a scratch that can't be fixed, that's a bad omen for things to come. Which is a really damn shame because I feel like the music here is worth playing over and over again. But if it's gonna damage my needle or my turntable, that's a little alarming, all things considered. So, proceed with caution. Now, I don't always talk about this during these vinyl videos, but I also wanna give attention to the vinyl art. You know, the spot in the middle where it shows side A or side B, because this one's actually pretty unique. It actually shows Madeline and Battleline, respectively, as they spin around when the turntable spins, which is really cool. Alternatively, the B-side actually shows her different transformations when dashing. Her neutral, her special, and when she's got no dashes left. Now, it's because of how it spins with the table, I feel like it's a really cool effect. Something I wish I'd seen others do in my collection. And I feel like it just adds a little more, even though what I have here is basic, that's just what I have. But when you add it with the different color designs that release from Ship to Shore, I feel like this is a really cool one to have, and the artwork just adds to it. So, that's presentation, but how does it sound? Well, here's a couple of samples from what I personally say is my favorite of the soundtracks in Celeste. Take a listen to some samples from Celeste B-Side.
As mentioned earlier, because of the very nature of the B-sides and just how long players may spend in these levels, you're going to hear a lot more of this soundtrack as opposed to the main soundtrack. And because of that, you're really going to start to draw some more comparisons as a result. In my case, I feel like the biggest comparison to be made was because of Golden Ridge. Let's talk about the main soundtrack. In that version, it's more ambivalent. It's made to play to the environment. When the wind picks up, you start to hear the track become much more violent as a result. It's very much like nature. But when you compare that to the B-side soundtrack, it has a melody. It sounds catchy. Because of how long you spend playing the stage, because it's one of the harder ones, you're going to remember that track more in your head as a result. At least was the case for me. It's not to say that the B-sides are meant to overpower what happens in the main soundtrack, but I feel like players are going to cling more to this soundtrack compared to Lena's main soundtrack. And part of that really is that distinction because of the guest artist and just how different they can make each track sound. And as a result of that, it's just my opinion anyways, but I feel like some of the tracks here are way better than the main game soundtrack. And what we have here is an incredible package of songs. And that's not even talking about the two bonus songs that Lena included, which includes a bonus version not found in the main game of Forsaken City, as well as an alternate version that only has the piano. Once again, hearkening back to the idea of using organic instrumentals. I really do love that they were included here, because otherwise with only eight tracks, it actually would have been relatively short before it even started. Case in point though, I really do love the B-side soundtrack and I think it's great for what it's trying to do with the game. But how about the overall package of this vinyl release? I like it, but I do have my complaints. As noted before with the smudginess of the outer sleeve, but then also just the design too. I feel like when you compare it to the original artwork of the main soundtrack, it really does just leave a little to be desired. I'm not going to complain though, because overall it is flashy and it does have streaks of Celeste, especially with the color scheme and overall look. But to any other person when they look at it, they're not going to know it's Celeste. I feel like part of that identity is kind of lost because of its basic design. I feel like had they incorporated something from the game, like maybe even have Madeline on the cover, it could have helped even just a little bit. And not to mention, they didn't add any composition notes this time. That's the one thing I loved about the main soundtrack that they don't have here is no composition notes. I don't get it. I really don't get it. Case in point though, I feel like what we have here is a strong soundtrack, but as a vinyl release, it does leave a little to be desired. But overall though, I feel like this one is the stronger of the other one. So if you have a turntable or you're a big fan of Celeste, this easily gets my recommendation, but I feel like this is the one to get for your collection just because of how unique it is. I'm certain that those that listen to it will definitely find one of their favorites on here, and maybe even multiple, that you want to play to over and over again. So, you heard it from me here. That said, we're not done yet because we still have one more vinyl to look at in this retrospective of the Celeste collection on vinyl. So do stay tuned. But that's going to do it here for this hands-on session of the Celeste B-Sides. My favorite track of this session was the Mirror Temple remix. Now, hear me out, if you have the gameplay, add a kaleidoscope effect to it, I feel like that can make for an easy music video. Kind of like in the same vein, let's say for example, maybe, I don't know, uh, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. I feel like that'd be incredibly cool. So, so I'm going to make it happen. <laughs> But all right, if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. And as always, I'll see you in the next part. Check it out, I have another part of me as well. My own bad version. <laughs>